Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk about your concept of God. The reason for this is not for a theological discussion and debate or anything like that, but it's to show you the importance and value of how you view God. Many people have concepts of God, oftentimes based on their earthly parents, specifically their father because Jesus called our God Father. And so they look at our Heavenly Father, they look at earthly fathers as some substitute for God and a representative of God. And in many cases that is true. The problem is many people don't have earthly fathers that are living up to that standard. But whatever it may be, how you view God and the love of God is going to dramatically affect your life. Because if you don't believe that it's the goodness of God that brings you to repentance, you don't believe that for God so loved the world, you don't believe that God is love, you don't believe that the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. If you don't believe all those things and really have them deep rooted in your heart, your life is going to reflect that. And that is so many people's issue with prosperity and abundance and success in life is how they view God. They expect God to be dishing out torment and trials and tribulation and suffering for them till the day they die, and that's somehow virtuous. There is certainly virtue when you do suffer that you stay righteous and you live holy and you get to the end and experience the Job experience of having double what you had before. You're blessed and abundant in glorifying God. But that's not where most people are coming from. Most people's perspective is that, well, you know, you never know what's going to happen, time and chance, and God may bless you, but maybe his answer is no. They have this no idea of God. But I'm going to tell you, when you know the true living God, there is no nay, there's no no. Even though it's not grammatically perfect to say it that way. There's only in him yea and amen. His promises are complete, they're true, and they're for you. They're not only for someone else. He wants to bless you. He has sent you blessing, but many people fail to receive it because their concept of God is that he doesn't want them to be blessed, or he only wants them to sometimes be blessed and other times to be cursed and suffering because that's somehow going to teach them some valuable lessons. And I was discussing this with another individual earlier today because their concept was that they need to go through the tribulation period so they can suffer and become greater and be ready for heaven. Somehow in Christianity, professing Christianity, I should say, because true biblical Christianity, following Jesus, being led by the Spirit, has never taught this. But somehow these people have this idea that they need to go and suffer and be miserable and have all kinds of awful experiences in life to get prepared for heaven. Not realizing the utter blasphemy in that statement because it is by the Spirit that we are made new creatures in Christ. It's not by suffering. It's not by tribulation. It's not by misery. It's not by failure. It's not by persecution. It's by the Spirit. It's by the grace of God that you are redeemed. And it's His goodness that leads you to repentance where you confess and forsake the sin that you receive the mercy in the first place. Stop lionizing the concepts of suffering and misery and failure and all this degradation as being good for you. Realize it for what it is. It's curses. It is evil. It's not good. It's not blessing. And much of it could be experienced because of your concept of God, because you're not seeing God who is love. Because many people would honestly say they would never treat their children that way as parents, but they expect that the God who is love, so loving that he sent his only begotten son into the world, that God, full of love and abundance and goodness and kindness and love, would treat them awfully, make them miserable, make their lives be terrible, 
somehow for his glory. Do you see the delusion in that? Do you see how that could hinder you and hold you back from his goodness and blessings? Not because of him, but because you are not willing, you're not receptive. It's like tuning into the wrong television station and wondering why you're getting the wrong programming. I don't understand I'm not getting Channel 21's programming when you're tuned into Channel 11. My friend, if you're tuned into negativity and cursing, meanwhile it's God who set before you life and blessing. Or you can choose death and cursing. You can go against him. But you choose. He's never forcing you. In his love, in his grace, in his mercy for you, he'll allow you to make even a bad decision, if that's what you want. He will give you many gentle reminders trying to get you on the straight and narrow. But in the end, you're going to be responsible for and accountable for your actions and your choices that lead to the life you experience. And I know this is hard for some people to, to grasp. They can intellectually understand the concept but to truly know in your heart that God is love, God loves you, God has goodness for you, God freely gives you all things richly to enjoy, He liberally gives you wisdom, His goodness is ever flowing for you and towards you and through you. That only goodness lies before you evermore. When you can't, out of the abundance of your heart, speak forth those truths and know them deep down in your subconscious mind as truth, you will continue to go through the common experience that most people who profess to be Christians have, which is one that's no better than the average sinner. There's no great grace or glory of God in their lives to be exhibited, and random accidental good things that seem to happen in their lives, those are somehow mightily held as good indications of God. And meanwhile, that could be their entire lives. And then they blame God for all the misery and the failure and things most often self-caused. And I know this can be a hard truth, but so often the trials and tribulations and misery and suffering that we could experience in life are self-caused. Now you may say what well, another individual's involved, or this person's involved, or this entity is doing this to me. But in the end, you're making choices that put you in the path to be in that situation in the first place. That's not to absolve other people of their responsibilities, but you have a responsibility in your life to choose good, to always see goodness around you, to always seek the goodness and blessing of God, to always seek after Him and His righteousness, and you'll see all these things be added unto you. My friend, really consider what your concept of God is. And I would encourage you, write it down. You don't have to share it with me or anyone else. This is just for you, between you and God. But write down truthfully, blunt, honest words about how you view God. And ask Him to give you wisdom and revelation to see the truth. The truth that He is love. The truth that He is abundance. The truth that He is goodness. And He's ever willing and ever present to expound and expand his goodness into your life if you'll receive it. Now my friend, if you really want to ramp that up, that understanding, that knowledge, and your union with God, I encourage you to get my book, Co-Creators with God. I also encourage you to get my book, God's Secret Law of Attraction, because both those books together, while they deal with different issues, combined, if you'll take notes and you'll read those books and you'll get into them and follow the things prescribed in there, you will start to see yourself walk with God, be like God, and you'll understand Him truly as a loving Heavenly Father. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.